you have seen uh, our dear friend here who has performed true stories in the past uh, here on this stage as well as her, her home stage at the Reboot. Uh, and Rocky tonight will be doing a fictional piece. It means it's made up and it's very important that you know that no animals, none whatsoever, were harmed in the making of this story. Take it away. Very nice. I don't want the sun in my eyes. Okay, okay. Oh, hello, beautiful people. This is the story of a dog and a cat. Okay. My dog, I was walking my dog, Twinkle. Twinkle is such a beautiful, lovely cat. Let me give you a mental picture of Twinkle. She's a combination breed, a sort of a mixed between a bath mat and bedroom slipper. <laughs> sort of like a little banana bread dog, like that dog over there. So I, I'm walking my dog, Twinkle, and Twinkle is sniffing in the bushes, and she's taking too long. I have a sniff limit. It's my policy. 10 seconds, they don't perform, we're moving on. I've got things to do. So I'm pulling, pulling, twinkle, and twinkle won't come. And there's something in the bushes. And I look in the bushes, and it's a dead cat. A big black dead cat. And I pull twinkle, I pull twinkle because I'm not good with dead. I, I once sprained my Achilles tendon uh, running from a dead moth that fell into my rigatoni. It was scary. <laughs> so I, I, I don't do good dead. I just push it out of my head. I, I take a twinkle and I walk and I push it out of my head the way I push out how many calories there are in a vente caramel macchiato. <laughs> you know? Do you know how many? No way. 410. You have to be careful with the, the Starbucks. <laughs> so I, I walking with a, a twinkle, and we go, and at the community bulletin board, I see a poster, and it says, and it is a picture of the cat, and it says, if anybody find Mr. Binky, Mr. Binky. This is a person who loves their cat, no Mr. Binky. Yeah. So the sign says, if anybody find Mr. Binky, please call this number, dead or alive, I don't care. So it specifies, right? They give me permission. <laughs> so I think uh, I love my twinkle so much. I would want to know that my precious kitty or pet wasn't suffering, right? Wouldn't you? Yeah, Wouldn't you yes. want to know? Yeah. Okay, so I take uh, the number and I go home and I tell uh, my husband, oh, my hair, not so good today. Oh. I go home and I tell uh, my husband, who's a wonderful husband. We've been married 27 years. I would recommend him. <laughs> If I were to give him a review on Yelp, I'd give him five stars. Yeah, five stars. But the problem with my husband, he happened to live on a street called It's Not My Problem Street. <laughs> and if you don't know that, it's right around the corner from It's None of My Business Lane. <laughs> and he said to me, Pirouette, Pirouette, give me that number right now. Give, I'm going to put it in in the circular file where I put all your restoration hardware catalogs. <laughs> I love my catalogs. But I say, no. He says, you, you know what they, why they always say, don't shoot the messenger? Because they always shoot the messenger. <laughs> don't call that number. And I say, I don't care. I have to do my duty. 
as an American pet lover and tell this person that his precious Mr. Binky is not a suffering. So I, I call the number. It's a rotary phone, because this happened a long time ago, so it takes a minute. And I call the number, and I hear the, the voice of an old man answers, hello? And I admit, I, I should have started the conversation differently, because I said, I found Mr. Binky! <laughs> And he was so happy. He said, oh, you don't know how happy I am. I knew somebody would find Mr. Binky. Oh, this is so important. My wife died 10 wow. years ago, and Mr. Binky is my only living relative. <laughs> and I think, uh, hmm. say that sentence again. Just take out the word living. <laughs> but uh, no, no, I don't do that. I'm uh, not a cruel person. Uh, uh, he says to me, uh, how is Mr. Binky? He's sleeping <laughs> and he's uh, happy. Uh. It's a metaphor, you know. <laughs> and he's very excited and he says, uh, what's your address? I come over right now and I give him the address and I hang up and my husband, who's been listening the whole time, he says, Pirouette! How come you didn't tell Mr. Binky's daddy that he was dead? And I said, I couldn't do it on the phone. I think I stand up a little bit. Eh? I couldn't do it on the phone. I had to do this in person. And he says, you know what they say. They always shoot the messenger. I say, I don't care. So Twinkle and I, we go outside because you see, I live on Extra Mile Boulevard. Mm. <laughs> he live on, on no, not my problem, we live together, but I live spiritually on Extra Mile Boulevard. It's important to do the right thing. So we go outside and we wait, Twinkle and I. And in a little while, I see an old man in an old Volvo coming up the road. And he stops in front of our house and he gets out and he has a plate of chocolate chip cookies. And he says, oh, I'm so happy I baked these this morning. These are for you. Thank you, thank you. Do you know why we call him Mr. Binky? Um, of course, I don't know. And he says, when the kitty was a baby, we used to put a little binky in his mouth. I said, oh, no, no, don't tell me. I don't need to know. And then he started to go in the house. And I said, Mr. Binky's not in the house. He's not in the house. I said, no. He's outside. I said, yes. How can you be sure he's still there? Well, you just have to trust me on this. <laughs> and so he follows me. And we walk, and of course, the Twinkle remember where she smelled Mr. Binky in the bushes. <laughs> and we get there, and there's Mr. Binky, and he's dead in the bushes. And I point, and Mr. Binky's daddy, how can you do this to me? You, you, you got my hopes up and then you let them down. Why didn't you tell me? And I said, I'm so sorry. I was on my way to tell you, but I had to tell you in person. Isn't it better that you know that your kitty is, is not suffering? Maybe he's in kitty heaven with catnip or something. <laughs> and I see the tears well up in his eyes and he looks and he bends down. That's not a cat. That's a raccoon. <laughs> I, 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 I must admit I got a little defensive. What am I, a veterinarian? <laughs> it's a big, it's a black, it's a dead, it's in the bushes, I don't know. <laughs> and I said, I, I'm sorry. I. I 
don't shoot the messenger. <laughs> I, I didn't know what else to say. I said, I'm sorry, I got your hopes up, and then I crushed them, and then I got them confused. I gave him back his cookies. <laughs> and do you know what he did? No. He took the cookies, go in the car, and didn't even say thank you. <laughs> so, my friends, the moral of this story is, if you see a dead cat in the bushes, make sure it's dead. Make sure it's a cat. And then mind your own business. <laughs>